Live from the KMOV Broadcast Center. This is News 4 at 6, watching out for you. You just wonder how you made it through this, this far, how you got this far. They had no idea where the shooter was. So they, many of them believed the shooter was just down the hall from where they were. It doesn't really get any easier, but it's all the memories that, that help. I would give my own life to have my baby back. I would, but I know that's not possible. One year ago, tragedy shook St. Louis. A shooter broke into a South City High School campus, killing two people and injuring multiple others. Students, teachers in our community now changed forever. And tonight, First Lord Four is bringing you team coverage as we remember and reflect. First, our Russell Kinsaw spoke with the principal at the Collegiate School of Medicine and Bioscience. Russell. Yeah, collegiate principal Frederick Steele stayed with Alex Bell, the student who was wounded after she was shot. She was one of two victims who were shot and killed in the school shooting, the other teacher, Jean Kuska. Today, I also spoke with a student who told me about his hero teacher who was prepared to defend his students to the death. We could hear the gunshots, and as soon as I heard it, we all knew this wasn't a drill. This is a real, real life or death situation. In that moment, 16-year-old Judah Williams says there was panic, and he prayed and texted his mother, Teresa Williams. My son sent a text message that said there's an active shooter in the building. Judah said his teacher immediately started going through the steps to lock down their room. And I felt safe with him in the room because I could tell if anything happened, he would, he would be willing to put his life on the line. Judah told his mother that his teacher stood with a baseball bat by the classroom door. Just the fact that the teacher was in between his life, his the gunman and the students, and was willing to do that. While the shooter entered the Central Visual and Performing Arts site of the Dual High School building, Alex Bell ran to the Collegiate School of Medicine and Bioscience side. Principal Frederick Steele comforted her till paramedics arrived. Sometimes he says he wonders if he could have done anything differently. Mostly I was glad to be there. Um, of course, in a, any crisis situation, you know, you're, act, you're reacting with at lightning speed. Judah was one of the students who went to the Missouri State Capitol to lobby the legislature for tighter gun controls. His mother says in the aftermath of the trauma, her son has shown empathy toward his fellow students who he now considers family. There's a lot that the school is still processing. Even my son explained this morning, he said, Mom, while others may want to forget about this, there's still three more graduating classes of students who remember what happened. He said, so we can't forget. The district has provided many opportunities for therapy and events to help heal. Steele said he was given this advice. You're never going to forget the event. You're never going to unlive the trauma. Um, you can only remain on the path of recovery and allow yourself to build up resilience. One year later, the events of that day are not far away. Every time an announcement comes on, there is a slight amount of panic or just a thought in the back of your mind that something may happen again. After two days of self-healing and remembrance, students and teachers are back to school tomorrow. Principal Steele said there is some comfort in being back to a predictable routine. However, this is homecoming week, so students have that to look forward to. Live in South St. Louis, Russell Kinsall, First Alert 4. Russell, thank you. It's an interview you'll only see on First Alert 4. The husband of the teacher killed in the South City School shooting, now remembering his wife who died protecting students. He's also now raising questions about the day that his wife was killed. Tonight, First Alert 4 investigates Susan Alcori uncovering new developments. A year later, there are things we still don't know. We haven't seen any surveillance or body camera video. St. Louis police keep telling us they haven't finished their investigative report, so they can't release more information. Gene Kuchka's husband tells us he's seen the surveillance video and what he saw in the initial moments of the gunman trying to enter the school has him saying more needs to be done to keep schools safe. Active shooter at the school. When a 19 year old shot his way into Central VPA and stood outside Gene Kuchka's classroom, shot the lock out of the door and then came into the room. Inside, she didn't hesitate. She had a bunch of students behind her. Her husband Steve remembering his high school sweetheart and mother of their five children. Just this last weekend, my youngest daughter got married. But uh, we know she was looking down on us. 
because the weather was really nice. Uh, perfect day for it. You know, the sun was out. In the year since the shooting, their family has a lot of questions. It would have been nice if certain things would have happened that could have prevented this. They didn't in the schools. They did not have a, very many safety measures in place. Steve says he's seen surveillance video showing a school security guard was near the door. The 19 year old gunman shot his way through. He says the guard alerted the school to go on lockdown. They didn't confront the shooter. At St. Louis Public Schools, guards work directly for the district, and many are unarmed. The first five minutes is the most important. Actually, the first minutes, um, not good. But in the first five minutes, usually everything's over by then. So you, you have to have ways to slow them down for the law enforcement to get there. We took his concerns to the school district's director of safety and security. Perspective for some people, courageous for others, and I, and I sympathize and I empathize with the Kushka family, but um, I didn't see what he saw. While he wouldn't directly confirm what happened, he did say an unarmed guard was the first to warn the school. He was at Paul Revere. He sounded the alarm. He got things moving and he was feet from this, this young man. The school district says questions should go to police, but there's been little transparency in the investigation. To date, no video has been released, and police say their final report isn't finished. First Alert 4 Investigates keeps trying to get answers from St. Louis Police Chief Robert Tracy. In a year, do you think it's too long? Should we be doing it faster? Well, we'll get this out, and then anybody that's calling up we talk to all the schools, we're transparent, but we want to make sure we want to make sure that investigation is done thoroughly. It's a stark contrast to other cities, Nashville, Louisville and Allen, Texas. Three cases of mass shootings this year where police showed quick turnarounds on transparency. In Nashville, police released video of a school shooter within a day. Uh, we know part of the story. Now, have you had questions about why it's taking so long? Uh, yeah, they just say it's, you know, short staff, a lot of different things to do. Um, not really any good reasons. There have been security changes at the school. Pictures show Kuchka's classroom door before the shooting. There's an older lock and large windows. Since then, it's been replaced with a clear focus on security. So that, that door that he got in was secured. Uh, he wouldn't have been able to get in. This year, Jean Kuchka received a Congressional Medal of Honor. That was her job, is to protect the kids. Awarded for her last act, which her family says is no different from how she lived every day. She's pretty much selfless. She would always put her, put everybody else first. We hear this a lot from police. They can't release any more information because an investigation is ongoing. We've repeatedly asked the department what is still being investigated, considering this is a case where the shooter died and to date, no one has been charged criminally. Just last night, police put out a statement saying in part, as the investigation nears completion, we've begun the lengthy and meticulous task of reviewing the investigative report and all of the evidentiary material in anticipation of publicly releasing information that serves to inform the public about the details of this incident. We'll keep pushing for this information that could prove invaluable for other schools to learn from and protect their own students. Susan L. Corey, First Alert 4 Investigates.